Welcome back guys. Last year, I built this smokeless fire pit. Then a couple weeks ago, I built this brick pizza oven based on a bunch of videos that I'd seen of people doing this because I wanted to see, did it work? Well, needless to say, they both worked amazingly well. And that got me thinking about mowage. Specifically the mowage of the fire pit and the pizza oven in order to create a more perfect union. I'm gonna start out with this 55 gallon drum that Kim picked up for me. And then I'm gonna throw in some, well, let's just say some consumables because I wanna get a raging fire going in this thing for a couple reasons. Number one, I wanna burn off anything that's on the inside of it. And I wanna go ahead and burn the paint off of the outside of it. Now that everything's cooled off, I can dump the ashes and get to work. You should always save your ashes because uh, if you got a garden, they're great for your garden. That is not my garden. It's just my crappy backyard. Uh, the first thing that I have to kind of figure out here is how tall I want this thing to be. My original plan was to cut the barrel off right here. Basically, you know, the barrel is kind of divided into three sections here. Cut this bottom section off and then it would be, you know, this tall which would make it come up out of the fire pit to right here, which I felt would be the perfect height to put the pizza in. But accessing the fire below would not be very easy. So I think my first plan of action is to leave it at this height, and I'm gonna cut an opening that allows easy access to the fire, and then the pizza will go in up here. The paver pizza oven has an opening of approximately 15 and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna stick to that, give or take, on the uh, 55 gallon drum pizza oven. When I drilled the holes in the smokeless fire pit, everybody was like, oh, what, what tool did you use and what hole saw did you use? So I'm just using a Milwaukee 12 volt and I'm gonna use my Milwaukee hole dozer, hole saws. <laughs> Why? Why do I do this to myself? Small miracle. <laughs> I actually did find it, but I'm pretty sure Miracles. Look just a little bit worn out there. Just a little bit. Let's instead go with the two and an eighth. Yeah, so as I was saying, I'll be using this Milwaukee step bit. Get a straight line. I'm just gonna run this tape from the top of the hole on this side to the top of the hole on this side. I wanna leave this at the bottom of the barrel to give it extra strength. So I want this opening to come to like right here. Lord of mercy, that barrel's hot. Right up here. no idea if this is gonna work or not, but I'm gonna try just using this little Milwaukee cutoff tool, because it would be fair simple if it does. That worked better than I thought. Well, folks, a lesson has been learned. I have a uh, ND filter on the front of my lens here so that I can shoot out in the bright sun. And as I just went to shoot this next shot, I was like, oh, I got dust all over it. I don't know if you can see that. But all those sparks flew up on the lens on the ND filter and runt it. I runt my ND filter. It ain't no good. Fire's gonna be here. I want the pizza to go in up here. I'm gonna measure around using my uh, soft tape measure, find the center and mark this out. And I'm just gonna cut this out just the same. Not bad. I did mess up in one spot though. So the whole deal is I wanted to get off the tape. 
with this nice round corner. And I don't know if you can see it or not. Man, there's something in there. Right there, whenever I was cutting it, it came down past my corner there. That angers me. Beep bye. Now that I've gotten the uh, edges all filed down, it's time to do everybody's favorite part, and that is cement. Okay, relax, you can handle this. We need a base for the pizza to be able to sit on above the fire that heats up. Now, I've already proven with the smokeless fire pit that you can just pour concrete and it will hold up pretty well. I've had zero issues with mine and I'll you know, even whenever I was getting this barrel ready, I've got the fire right there against the concrete and there are no issues, I have no cracks. The main thing is how you pour it. And then I proved with the paver pizza oven that putting the pizza on the paver right above the flames also had no issues. But I can understand how over time, both of those could have problems. And so just for the sake of wanting this to last forever, I went ahead and got some refractory cement. Now, if you wanna see what the difference between all that is, you can actually go back and you can watch the pizza oven video where I did it using the pavers and kind of explained, I'm not gonna go into the weeds with that right now. You decide what's best for you. If you wanna use regular concrete, knock yourself out. Or even if you wanna take a paver, and cut it out to fit, you can do that. Just below the opening right here is where the cement paver, I guess you'd call it, <laughs> that I'm gonna pour is gonna sit. So I need to know what the diameter uh, uh, is. So I need to know what the diameter is of the inside of the barrel. And I don't need to be exact. Actually 22, we'll go, we'll say 21 and three quarter. Half of 21 and three quarter is 10 and seven eighths. I want to cut this circle out of this corner. I'm going to go 10 and seven eighths there. 10 and seven eighths there. You could of course cut this out with a jig on a router and that would be very simple and fast. I don't feel like setting all that up. I'm just going to use my jigsaw. with a different blade on it. I like to keep some of this foam around just because of just such an occasion actually. I've used this foam a lot to make molds. In fact, I used it to make the molds for the smokeless fire pit caps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this top on here that I cut or actually the mold base, I should say. I'm gonna cut that out so that I have a waterproof base because obviously, maybe not obviously, but this is MDF. So when I set this on top of the MDF, we get a thickness of one, can you see that, one and three eighths. I want my thickness on top of this to be an inch and a half. Easy way to figure out what you need that at is to set that an inch and a half above there. What's it come up to? Two and seven eighths. It's how tall I need my sides to be. I'm just gonna cut some kerfs, I guess you'd call it, in the back of this to help it bend easier. Oh yeah, that really helped that bend easier. See how much easier that bends now? It's all different types of ways you could do this. Carpet tape, okay? That's what I'm gonna hold this down onto the MDF with. I cut this strip of carpet tape in half, and I'm just gonna run it down the edge, just like that, all the way around. Now for added strength, all I'm gonna do is if you have some duct tape, perfect. I have a bunch of duct tape somewhere, but I have three little girls who like to use daddy's duct tape. So what I have here is gaffer's tape, and uh, it's stuff you use like when you're filming to hold stuff in places and it's flat black. But anyway, it'll hold this. I'm gonna take some of this silicone caulk. And this, I'm gonna use to seal up the corners. I 
I want to make sure that I leave basically a chimney in the back of this. So I'm just going to take this extra piece that I have. I'm going to use this silicone as a glue and put it back here. See how that ended up looking right in there? Really nice, huh? I tried to do this as quickly and as haphazardly as I could to show you that it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kidding, that's the way I would have done it anyway. Let's talk about handles. Because whenever I first started planning this out, and I know what you're thinking, dude, you plan this out? I mean, come on. Or I just ordered these off of Amazon. And because I like to be so thorough when ordering stuff and planning, and these are really nice. I kind of looked up grill handles, spring handles, coiled handles, whatever you want to call it. There is a problem though. So yeah, where does the screw go? Uh, huh? Clearly these are meant to be welded on and they're gonna look sharp when they're on here. But uh, I, I did actually just buy uh, a welder so I'm getting there, okay? But I ain't there. This is the plan. Not, not the cheap Harbor Freight Vice, but actually this. A die. Is it focused on it? Why won't you work with me, camera? I'm gonna start out by installing this really fancy vice jaw, soft jaw protector. All right, so I've got a half inch die on here. And that is, I think, the perfect size for this. Now, I don't have any cutting oil, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of motor oil on here. Listen, man, you just gotta do what you gotta do. It's actually, it seems to be biting in. Pretty good. All right, back it out. I believe what is required here is a little bit more leverage. So I've got a pipe here. We'll give that a go. There we go, there we go. Oh, just like that right there. Just like that right there. I think the form's dry enough now. I'm gonna put a little release agent in there in the form of Pam. You could use WD-40 if you want, but I'm gonna be eating off this obviously, so. Pam is an excellent choice. Normally, I wouldn't do this, but I did go ahead and take the liberty of reading the instructions on here. And it says that I need one quart of water per 12 and a half pounds of this uh, refractory cement. So, <laughs> are you trying to reach it, Mikey? So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this whole 25 pounds into my tub here. Whew. Stand back so you don't breathe this in when it opens up. Ay -ay 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 I just pulled my fingernail backwards. Oh, Cameron, I might, might need you to open this for me. Thank you, my love. Now, for long-time viewers of the channel, you'll be expecting the dog food scoop, maybe even the chicken scoop, but no, no, no. Bona fide concrete scoop. Not really, it's an ice scoop, but I did get it as a Christmas gift from my little baby dolls. I'm hoping that this will be enough. I did get two tubs of this, just in case. I'm not gonna smooth the top of this over because the instructions specifically say, don't do that. Same shirt, different day. I've just realized that I made two mistakes, probably, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. With this pour, number one is, I probably should have made this into two pieces so that it would be easier to get into the pizza oven. I can still get this in there, but it would have been easier with two pieces. And then the second mistake is I should have covered this with plastic last night to keep it from drying out and uh, you know what I mean? Things happen. 
I think I'm going to go ahead and attempt to take this out. One thing I want to point out is anytime you use gray cement, which this is gray cement versus white cement, gray cement takes much longer to set up. And I pointed this out whenever I did the smokeless fire pit caps and some guy was like, hey, I ain't never heard no difference between colors of concrete drying faster, but it's a fact. Uh, you can look it up. Gray, I mean, I, I used to do this for a living. Gray cement takes much longer, so it's much more fragile when you take it out of the mold the next day. So you have to be very careful. So, and I can feel it. This is actually still a little soft, but anywho, ain't nobody got time. I got to get it out of here. This is what's good about using the foam for the mold is that it gives. So it just makes it easier to get out of here. Oh. Well, that's, oh, that one up went down, down, down. This is expanded metal. And this is often used for making grills and barbecues. And in fact, whenever I was a kid, we had a really nice brick uh, grill that my dad had made in the corner of our back patio. And it had this across the, the top of it for us to grill on and, and below to hold the charcoal. And then whenever he took out the charcoal grill, I actually used this to make a high flow intake for my Camaro. This is exactly why I should have made it in two pieces. Oh, is this a bit of a hassle? Now I can place these L brackets. Now I can place <laughs> these L brackets or corner bracket, whatever you want to call it. I'll place them down in here and pre-drill anytime you drill any metal it's a good idea to either sweep of course or if you have one of these magnetic sweeps go over it and look at all that metal if I didn't go over that that would either be in my girl's feet or my dog's paws <laughs> I'm just coating this with high heat grill paint. I would have liked to have painted this with copper to match my grill, but I couldn't find any in stock anywhere. And then I was actually tempted to really rust it up and coat it with clear high heat paint, which could have been kind of cool looking, but we'll just go with black for now. And maybe I'll change it later. What do you think? Should we put it in the fire pit, make a pizza, and see if this pizza oven actually works? I say yes. The pizza oven is at around 650 degrees now, and I actually went ahead and put in a piece of dough just to kind of clean this off. Let's put this in there now and see what happens. Four minutes later. Tell me, that doesn't look good. There you have it guys, DIY pizza oven for the smokeless fire pit. Obviously you don't really have to put it in the smokeless fire pit. I just chose to do that. Check out one of the other videos if you wanna go see how to make the smokeless fire pit or to make the even easier pizza oven. Anyway guys, I'll see you next time. That's good.